Thank you. Uh, first, I would like to thank the organizers for arranging such a wonderful conference and displaying the warm Korean hospitality. Uh, I also would like to thank the other speakers for giving such wonderful talks. I would like to talk about some work I've been doing recently, uh, in particular with the work with, uh, in this collaboration with Harikat, Iqbal, uh, Coach Chaz, and my student uh, Lockhart. And it uh, also draws on some aspects of some previous works. It's also related to a number of talks uh, in the conference related to 2,0 theory, directly, more directly related perhaps to the talks by John and by Siok and Saraf tomorrow and somewhat uh, tangentially to the talks that we heard and some that we'll hear tomorrow. Also related to some uh, work and ideas that were explored a while back uh, by this Korean group. So, uh, so the outline is, first I want to talk about aspects of the M5 RAIN and 203 that by now has been so thoroughly reviewed in the past, past talks, so I will be very brief. I'll talk about suspending M2 brains between M5 brains, and this is what I'm going to call as M strings. And then I'm going to use topological strings to compute the elliptic genus of these strings. So that's basically the offshot of the, of the talk is going to be this number three, this computation, which uh, one can think of it as encapsulating the or harvey states of the M strings. And then the question is, the, okay, once we have computed this, what is the interpretation of this elliptic genus? And I try to offer some thoughts here about what does this computation mean in terms of uh, what M strings are after all? And, and I will explain uh, the relation between computation of the super conform index of the 2 comma 0 theory and the relation of this to the elliptic genus of M strings. So, uh, so by now we are familiar with the important, property, important relation between the M2 brains of M theory and the string theories, and in particular, uh, we know that whenever we get some one-dimensional object, we, can, we would like to wrap the M2 brain around it and get the string. So in particular, we know that the wrapping of the M2 brain around the circle gives you the 2A string, or suspending the M2 brain between the hojao witten walls, or M9, M9 brains of M theory gives you the heterotic E8 cross E8 strings. And uh, this naturally raises the question of whether the enigmatic 60, 2, 0, and the 1, 0 superconformal theories uh, whose existence is signaled by the appearance of tensionless strings leads to some effective perturbative scheme involving light strings. This is a tough question. I'm not going to be able to answer this question. Uh, but nevertheless, I would like to study aspects of these, of these tensionless strings, but in particular, not quite at the tensionless limit, uh, but at the limit where I separate slightly these uh, corresponding objects. So we will have some kind of strings corresponding to M2 brain suspended from nearby uh, M5 brains or suspended between nearby M5 brain to M9 brain. And uh, in this case, we will be talking about the AN minus 1, 2, 0 theory. And in this kind of case, one would be talking about the E8, uh, the theory which has E8 global symmetry in 6D, or if you have N of these M5 brain corresponds to the analog of the, the N instantons of E8, small instantons of E8, that one may want to talk about. So, so this is the dictionary. I'm calling this these light strings, for lack of better word. I'm going to call it M strings because we are only using the basic ingredients of M theory, namely just the M5 brain and M2 brain. So I'm thinking about the situation where M5 brains are parallel and very close to each other. So these strings are light. They, do not, they are not tensionless, but light. And I would like to compute partition functions of these strings. But partition functions. Uh, in particular on uh, two torus with possible t twist around the torus. So, so therefore, the relevant geometry I'll be considering would be the following. I take the geometry of the 11 dimensional of M theory to consist of two R4s, these two, and an extra T2, and one more dimension in the direction perpendicular to this T2. So it adds up to 11, 4 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. The, the directions where I wrap the M5 brain are going to be this R4 parallel and the T2. And there's going to be a, the transfers to the M5 brain, there's going to be R4 perp and also this other direction. And I'm also going to talk about, when talking about the uh, elliptic genus and twisting, I'll consider more general possibility of taking the geometry, changing the geometry such that as you go around the cycles of this T2, 
instead of having a product structure for R8 times T2, I will have a fiber structure. And uh, the fiber structure is going to sit inside SO4 times SO4 rotation, which preserves the uh, supersymmetry, which means it's basically an, it's an SU4 subgroup. So it's characterized by three parameters. So two of them are the usual epsilon 1, epsilon 2 parameters uh, related to the rotations of R4. And one more parameter, which is M, or slightly shifted to make it supersymmetric, is the, the one which I associate with the perpendicular rotations. So this is the, the holonomy of this uh, SO8 or SO4 times SO4. So this is the kind of geometry we will be considering. And the M2 brain in this geometry will be simply the, uh, the, the M strings will be considered uh, by having M2 brains suspended between the M5 brains. And therefore, uh, when you take this length to be sufficiently small, you're getting an effective theory on this T2, which is twisted by the maximal symmetry, which preserves the supersymmetry of this, uh, of this uh, string. And we're interested in computing this partition function. So as was already discussed uh, in the past talks, uh, we know that the M5 brain wrapped on a circle will lead to SUN gauge symmetry. And adding a mass term leads to the 5D parent of the 4D n equal to 2 star theory. This was the same mass term that appeared in the previous talk by Siok. And it's, in this case, it's geometrized by the rotation of the transverse uh, four directions here. This, is a, this plays the role of the mass. And these are the epsilon 1, epsilon 2 directions which have to do the rotation of the the usual space-time viewed from the viewpoint of the Yang-Mills theory. So this can be viewed as uh, the parent of the 4D n equal to 2 star theory. So I, sometimes I call it n equal to 2 star and 5D. That's what I mean. You could call it n equal to 1 star and 5D, but that's, it's a parent of that theory, the one which reduces to it under circle compactification. So, so we can in geometrically engineer these theories in 5D, and we can use either PQ5 brains, uh, which parallels Witten's construction, or view it uh, in terms of the elliptic vibrations of Calabia, and either, both viewpoints will be useful. So we could start with uh, five brains uh, in this way, which have extra compact circle direction, and some other five brains, so this is the five brain and S5 brain, at limit of mass equal to zero, you get some symmetry like this. This would be the one we would be getting if we were talking about two M5 brains. Uh, so you get the analog of the SU2 gate symmetry. Or we can do the analog of the turning on the mass term, which means that uh, as we go around the circle, we don't come back to the same point, but we slightly shift. So the corresponding five brains will be shifted, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1 of the type 2b theory. And the corresponding shift is related to the mass uh, of the corresponding, uh, the corresponding mass that we have introduced for this n equals to 1 star theory. So, so we can think of it this way in terms of toric diagrams or D5 brains and so forth. Uh, it will look like some geometry like this, where we identify these legs as we go around this length with, with some identification length, which I call here tau. And the masses are these, uh, these two masses are these, uh, the length of these intervals. So now it turns out in this case, there's a fiber-based duality, which turns out to be crucial for us. Just from this picture, we can think about this as an SU2 gauge theory if you just think about the corresponding strings in the usual way. But uh, there's another way of thinking about it. Instead of thinking about that as SU2, we can also think about it as this way, in terms of a U1 theory with two fundamental hypermultiplets, with some extra condition where something is periodic in the normal direction, which turns out to be related to interpreting this theory as a 6D theory with a U1 with two hypermultiplets. So the same geometry has two dual descriptions. Now, this was for two M5 brains. We can certainly repeat it for any number of M5 brains. So we have a geometry like this, depending on how many M5 brains we, can, we want to consider. Again, the fiber-based duality there gives you two different interpretations. Either we can talk about it as SUN or more precisely UN theory uh, living on these vert in these vertical brains. Or we can think about them in the fiber-based duality in terms of a U1 to the N minus 1, these U1s with these bifundamentals, uh, with, with uh, bifundamental matter. Now, so, so here enters the topological strings. So when we think about this as a Calabia, uh, then, so for example, if any of these descriptions, when I think about this as a Calabia description, you're, you're ending up with a theory in five dimensions. And we know that the topological string compute the BPS uh, degrees of freedom in this theory, 
with their spins. So what are their spins? Well, if you take, go around the circle and rotate the two planes, that, that captures the BPS content. So the BPS content of the topological string is exactly the computation of topological, is exactly the computation of the partition function of this theory in this background. And in this context, uh, we can think about uh, this, this uh, topological string computation as, uh, if you want to interpret it this way, uh, it will end up being computation of the BPS state. But in this case, viewed from the viewpoint of M theory, is nothing but the M2 brains, the number of M2 brains stretched between the M5 brains. Well, slightly, there are slightly more uh, degrees of freedom, but they are kind of trivial. They're the U1 to the N minus 1 degrees of freedom, which I've factored out. And I'm calling that Z hat. So it's effectively, Z hat is just Z, to Z topological string modulo the Z of U1 to the power of N. So let me call it Z hat. So the basic topological string partition function computes for us precisely the, the uh, partition function of these NM2 brains, where you can decompose the Z topological in terms of uh, the exponents, e to the minus NTF, to read off the partition function of elliptic genus of M2 brains suspended between M5 brains. So, uh, so how do we compute the topological string partition function? Well, that's, uh, the, that can be easily done using the topological string uh, vertex, topological vertex formalism. It ends up basically doing Feynman diagram techniques, very simple ones. You just associate to each edge a young diagram you sum over all Young diagrams. There's a, the angle of the propagator. Uh, it's e to the minus the length, the Schrodinger time, times the, the analog of the mass, which in this case is the number of boxes of this uh, Young diagram. And then there's the vertex, which is the only non-trivial piece of, really, of this topological vertex. So it's some function here, uh, which depends on the two epsilons, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, that, that figures into the rotations in the, two, in the R4 direction. The dual U1 perspective suggests that we sum over the uh, Young diagrams in the vertical direction. That's the duality I was referring to. So it suggests that we should think about computations from the viewpoint of fixing the instanton number of these U1s in terms of these nu1, nu2, etc., or cho choice of the U1 instanton numbers, which turns out to be related to these choice of Young diagrams, and summing over all the vertical directions. So the basic ingredient turns out to be just, any, just this one piece here. You just take this one piece here, which is going to be, has two legs, which are the two partitions, and it will depend on the size of this extra direction, which I call tau, and the, the mass, which depends, which is this length here, and the corresponding parameters, epsilon 1 and epsilon 2, which featured in the twisting of the R4 degree of freedom. So this is really the building block of the computation. And you can, of course, add, multiply them and take, take any number of them and get any number of M5 brains. So from one basic ingredient, we can compute uh, all of them. And this ingredient can be viewed as an ingredient that you can define as a partition computation done for a single M5 brain. You can think of it as a single M5 brain with some degrees of freedom inserted on the two ends to try to compute them. So everything boils down to a single M5 brain. So, so, what, so this is basically the computation. So the computation is done. So we just use a topological string formalism. We compute it, and so we have the answer. The question is, okay, what does this teach us about M strings? Well, what do we expect? Well, we expect a 4 comma 4 supersymmetric theory. If we didn't have the M5 brain to end on, the M2 brains we know has, eight, uh, has, uh, has 16 supersymmetries, and now we only have half of it, so we get 4 comma 4 supersymmetry. So that's not a surprise. If you do these general twists compatible with preserving uh, supersymmetry, you end up computing the 2,0 elliptic genus. Again, that's not surprising. So the computation here is, uh, are these extra parameters which, are, which we can turn on to correspond to the breaking that SO8 symmetry into directions which preserve supersymmetry, and it will depend on the tau, the t complex structure of the corresponding M2, M string. So this is now we were thinking about the M strings on this T2, characterized by the complex structure tau with these twist parameters. And so this is what topological string computation gives us. Now, there is a dual type 2B description, uh, which was first pointed out by Witten, which involves the 2,0 theories involving type 2B with AD singularities. Uh, 
this is, as far as talking about the conformal theory itself, it's, it's, it's fine, but if you're talking about separating the M5 brain, there's a slight difference which actually figures, which shows up in the little string description, namely one direction transfers to the M5 brain is, is a circle in this context. So you don't have the full symmetries of, this, of the rotation of the, of the R4. So the, I had the R4 transfers, and I was rotating the two planes by M and minus M. That cannot be done with this description. So if you're, if you're willing to ignore that extra mass parameter rotation, you can still describe this string in terms of the corresponding uh, description in terms of type 2 with AD singularity. And the corresponding M strings are the D3 brains wrapped around the blown up cycles. We get the usual AD quiver theory uh, with 4, 4 supersymmetry. And uh, the only drawback for that is that we don't have the full SO4 symmetry, but only an SO3 symmetry. In, in the language I've been using, it means like we have frozen the mass parameter to these values, epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 over 2. So in other, or in other words, in the SO8 rotations we're doing, we'll be restricted to co-dimension 1 subspace. So we can first test whether or not if we restrict the computation of topological strings, we just got the, the elliptic genus of the M strings, to this subspace, does it agree with the elliptic genus of 4, 4 AD quiver theory? For two M5 brains, the one I was just originally talking about, the answer would be corresponding to the A1 quiver theory. So you would be asking for the A1 quiver theory, which is pure UN Yang Mills with 4, 4 supersymmetry. Does the elliptic genus of that agree with the elliptic genus we compute? Okay, so what is the answer we get? Well, the answer we get is, can be written in, uh, in uh, one line, basically this. This is the partition function of N M2. M2 brains, or N NM strings, uh, stretched between two M5 brains. So in other words, coming from the case of two M5 brains. And uh, it's given basically in terms of theta functions. So first of all, notice basic is modular with the usual properties of transformation of the theta function. Uh, this tau is the argument of the theta function, plus these, uh, these shifts of the theta function argument by Z, V, W, D, and U, where what you do is, if you're fixing the particular N here, you fix the Young diagrams of a fixed number of boxes. And you take a product over the, the elements in the box. And depending on which element of the box in the Young diagram you're considering, the arguments of the theta functions are shifted differently. And how they are shifted is indicated here. These shifts will depend on the corresponding epsilon 1, epsilon 2, the mass parameter. And that's how the shift so that's how epsilon 1, epsilon 2, and the m come into the formula, basically by some combination of the arguments of the theta function. And it's the ratio of these theta functions. You take the product over all the boxes, sum over all the Young diagrams, and that's the answer. So it's a relatively simple one. Now we can restrict the attention to, uh, to the parameters of the type to be dual covert description, which means you restrict to m to be plus or minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 over 2. So we compare, therefore, the partition function of 2M5 brains with A1 quiver, as I just mentioned. Actually, the answer vanishes. So at first sight, you did nothing to check because of there's a U1 center of mass degree of freedom, which kills the whole thing. But that's a little cheating. You can kind of factor out the U1. This is familiar in the other cases as well. The U1 sometimes gives you a headache. So you can get the U1 out and then do the computations. And still, you can compare there. And then, uh, luckily, this has been recently computed the elliptic genus for these theories by uh, two collaborations. And our answers agrees with these answers to the large order in N that we have checked. So the, the, the formulas are not manifestly the same. They look somewhat similar. But uh, just to give you an indication, so if you take, for example, uh, our computation for the case where you have two, uh, uh, two M, M strings and compute it, you get this answer. And you can take M, uh, the special value of M. This is the answer we get. Uh, if you get rid of the U1 piece, in other words. And th that agrees with the answer that, that, uh, that you would get uh, by the computations that these guys did. And the computation that we will do uh, should be compared with the computation that uh, has been obtained, the collaborations I mentioned. In that context, the answer that is obtained is in terms of pairs of Young diagrams. So it's not obviously the same kind of expressions. This is sum over single Young diagrams. This is a pair of Young diagrams. And it turns out that it agrees uh, in the cases that up to the large order of the number of M strings, I think up to 20 or whatever we check. So it's, it's presumably true. Now, however, this is not totally satisfactory. As I mentioned, we cannot turn on the M in this description. 
So in other words, if we want to compute the elliptic genus of these m strings, for the general value of m, this is not sufficient. What do we expect there? What do we expect the n m strings to be, how do we expect it to be related to? Naively, we would have thought this related to some kind of a 4, 4 supersymmetric sigma model. So if you think about these m2 brains, n of them ending on the m5 brain, where the endpoints of the m, m2 brains on m5 brains are just basically given by these points in R4, fixed on the transverse direction. So you, it looks like you have an n-fold symmetric product of R4. So you would think that some kind of a 4, 4 theory on n-fold symmetric product of R4, and we can see if this, to what extent this is correct. So for a single M2 brain, we take n equals to 1 in that formula. This is the formula we, have, we would have obtained from topological string. Not too surprisingly, this agrees with the, uh, with the elliptic genus of the sigma model on R4, with the corresponding twist parameters turned on exactly the way we expect. So this is a good verification that the ideas hang together. And so the question is the next case where we take n M2 brains and stretch it between M5 brains, and naively we take the overflow formula for the symmetric product of R4s. We just do it naively and we expect a match, and surprise, it doesn't agree. So the symmetric product of two R4s, is the elliptic genus of them, is not agreeing with the elliptic genus that we obtain, therefore telling us this is not the correct description of two M, uh, this is not even the correct BPS description of degrees of freedom of two M, two M strings. In fact, this does, the fact that it does not agree with the symmetric pro product is, in principle, not a contradiction. This is a point out in a related context by Witten, where the issue has to do with the fact that in, in this corresponding theory, far away in some Coulomb branch, we get a symmetric product. But the point we are interested in is infinitely far away from those points, and the computation of an index here may have nothing to do with this isolated point, which could be a totally different branch. So we have computed something in this branch which is not appearing in this. So that that would resolve a potential con uh, contradiction. Now, on the other hand, it turns out that we can find a theory whose elliptic genus does agree with the elliptic genus of this M strings. And it turns out, not too surprisingly, that the, the theory is still based on the symmetric product of R4, or more precisely, the Hilbert scheme of N points on R4, but it's not a 4, 4 sigma model. So we have to sacrifice keeping all the supersymmetries manifest, we'll actually, we have only a description in terms of a 4, 0 supersymmetric sigma model, very much like the kind of sigma models we are familiar in the context of heterotic strings. The left, the bundle in which the fermions coupled on one side is the tangent bundle, but the other bundle, the right side, is not a tangent bundle, but, but the direct sum of two bundles, which I'm calling E plus E star, which has the same dimension as the tangent bundle, so you can think about the Hilbert scheme of n points on R4 as the marginal space of U1 instant on R4, and E and E star turn out to be the space of Dirac zero modes in the corresponding instant background, so dimension n and n, so it's 2n dimensional. This is also known as the tautological bundle for the Hilbert scheme. And it turns out that the churn character of this is the same as the churn character of the tangent bundle. So that is, uh, and I'm using piece, very much like the kind of things we do in the heterotic string. So the elliptic genus of this theory agrees with the elliptic genus of the four comma of the M strings. Now, the fact that we are ending up with a four comma zero theory instead of four comma four is not a surprise. Is, can be explained in the following sense. Note, remind, I remind you of the construction. As M goes to zero, this is the parent of N equal to two star theory. Notice this theory does not have still the maximum supersymmetry because you still have an extra brain in the game. So in this theory, we compute and we get the four comma zero theory of this in this context. To obtain the corresponding M string, we have to actually remove this extra line, this extra brain to infinity. Even though it does not compute, the, it does not change our index, it does change the theory from a 4, 0 to a 4, 4 theory. So the computation we have done is in this context, which, which is why we are getting a 4, 0 supersymmetric description of it. So similar story repeats for n bigger than 2 M5 brains. The story is very easy now. Now, in this case, instead of taking these distances to be small, I take the opposite limit, where I think about the T2 to be tiny, and you think about this projecting this picture of the M2 brains into a, the time, so you get the quantum mechanics problem, where the time is in the direction of the separation of the M5 brains, and you can think about the M5 brain as a domain wall introduced for the M2 brains as some defect. And so the partition function, the basic operation, the object that I said computes everything, is a domain wall introduced by the M5 brain, which interpolates between the two, 
uh, Young diagrams on the two sides. And uh, this is the formula for the contribution of the domain wall. And you just glue them together in, into a computation like this. Domain wall propagator, domain wall propagator, etc., where this uh, H is just the number of the Young diagrams. Beta is the separation between, between these, which is the usual time. And then this gives you the answer. So you can easily do this then for arbitrary number of M5 brains. So, um, so for N M2 brains, in fact, you can actually connect this to the description of, uh, of the, the vacuum of the NM2 brains, uh, which was studied in this context, in the, uh, in the ADS-CFT and the ABJM context. So they are also captured by Young diagrams. So you can think about this massive version of these M2 brains as being captured by Young diagrams. So this defect operator is intertwiner between vacuum on the left to the vacuum on the right, which now depends on the modulus of this T2. And that's basically the ingredient we have computed. And so we can also have a familiar, similar story for the case of the 1, 0 CD60 superconformal theory, where you have NM5 brains bringing to the boundary of the boundary of the space, the M9 brain. Now we need an extra boundary condition on the M2 brain here. So I call this D, the, the boundary which is to be determined. But once we determine that, we immediately can glue them together and get the uh, 60 superconformal field theory M string partition function. In fact, there's an interesting thing that we already know. If you forgot about this M5 brain and just put two boundary of the space on the two ends, we already know that this is the heterotic strength. And we do know how to compute the partition function of heterotic strength. So that means if you take the roughly the square root of the heterotic string partition function and project onto the Young diagrams, we should be able to reco recover the domain wall operator corresponding to M9 brains. And that would be very interesting to figure out. So finally, since I've run out of time, let me just uh, connect my, the work I, I discussed here to the work that was just uh, the talk we heard by CO. It turns out that topological string can be used to compute the partition functions on spheres. This could be S5 or S4 times S1 and so forth. And the idea is extremely simple. The idea is that basically the partition function on these geometries ends up being the partition function contribution for each PPS state as if they are elementary ingredients of the theory product over all of them and integrate over the corresponding masses marginal that you have, the normalizable modes that you have. So, for example, if you're trying to compute the partition function of the Calabia times S5, then all you end up doing, end up getting is that you can construct S5 in terms of a circle vibration on CP2, and near each of the corners you get the topological string contribution, but you get three different copies of the topological string contribution as we showed with my, in my work with uh, Lockhart. And this gives you the, the, the result that we heard in the previous talk as well. And the, these different pieces, it's very interesting because it involves inverting the topological string coupling constant. So it looks at like SL3Z type of transformations where you invert the coupling constant on, on, these, on these other corners, which is already very amusing. So using elliptic calabiaus, this leads to the computation of the superconformal index because you can push it one more up dimension because of this elliptic vibration. So you're ending up comp computing the partition function of the M5 brains in this geometry. And this gives you these kind of relations. So what we learn is that the M strings can be used to compute at least some amplitudes for the superconformal theory. In other words, the, the partition function of the M strings can be used to compute the, the elliptic genus of the M string, computes the partition function of topological string, which in turn can be viewed as a computation of the partition function of topological string on M5 times on T2 cross R4 which in turn, by gluing these three different pieces, gives you the superconformal index of the M5 brain. So the elliptic genus of M string computes the superconformal index of the M5 brain as a first indication that these M strings can actually be used to compute something for the tensionless string limit, the conformal theory itself. So this is actually a powerful statement. And the question is, is this just an isolated case, or that can this be generalized to other cases, uh, and whether M string can be used in other computation involving M5 brains? Thank you. Uh, we can take one or two questions. Are there questions for Kumrun? Did, so do you actually reproduce the, uh, the formula of the previous talk? Do you yes. actually reproduce the formula of the previous talk in a different way? Or, or I, I'm not quite sure yes. I understand. Yes. No, in fact, uh, the, this work that we did with Lockhart appeared a, a few weeks before their paper, more or less. Any other question? Well, in that case, let's thank Kamrun again. <laughs>